Be a part of the best pro wrestling podcast today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Enjoy tons of bonus videos, including patron-only live shows, gameplay, and vintage 10 for the wins, access to podcast question threads, the Friendo Care Package, and so much more. Support Going In Raw today at patreon.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Hey, Friendo Steve here. Hey, Larson. On today's Going In Raw News Brief, we're going to talk about Karrion Cross's mysterious past, backstage heat on AEW's Sammy Guevara, CM Punk singing the praises of Raw Underground, and dig deep into this Wednesday night's wrestling ratings. But first, we got more on Marty Jannetty maybe killing somebody? Larson, what's in the news? So yeah, following Marty's shocking admission on Facebook yesterday, which we spoke about in yesterday's news brief, that he, quote, made a man disappear, Janetti made an appearance on Boston Wrestling MWF to elaborate. Transcripts are from Fightful. This is what Marty had to say. Quote, I said he disappeared. I didn't say I killed him. I said he disappeared. The headlines were, Marty admits to murder. He elaborates on the situation uh, further. Quote, we're in the car, he grabbed me there, and I'm like, no, no, no. I wanted to get out of the car, and he got mad and angry. He jumped out of the car, grabbed me by my hair, I couldn't get away. He's dragging me to the back of the bowling alley, and threw me to the ground, he's trying to pull my pants down. <sighs> it was a brick laying there, what do you do when you're 13? I can't say he deserved to die, but he deserved to get his ass beat. When I was beating him in the head with a brick... I was only trying to beat his ass. I wasn't trying to kill him. Can you imagine dragging a guy to a river and throwing him and then finding out on the news this guy is missing? Now, I know you have your uh, degree in psychology, Larson. Can you please break down what's going on in this guy's head? <laughs> I don't have a degree in psychology. I took like a couple of uh, psychology classes in junior college. Yeah, so did I. Um He's so okay. Earlier today, when we were doing our NXT review, I sort of explained my what I felt about this. Do you see where I'm coming from? This sounds like a more sober yes. way of admitting to killing a person than a Facebook post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, 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 I see your your point, and yes, I agree. This is this is yeah. It definitely it, it actually sounds. Like he is providing further clarification. Yes, additional I, I, details and so on, yes. I understand that the first thing he says is, I say he dis I said he disappeared. I didn't say I killed him. But then he goes on and, and, and talks in detail about killing a person and throwing him into a river. And then seeing that they would then seeing a report on him being missing. And then now that so we had heard yesterday following the initial post that uh, local police were doing an investigation now. Um, and then they said the first thing they were going to look into was any reports of, of unsolved uh, homicides, I believe, or missing person cases mm -hmm, in that mm -hmm. area in 1973. Haven't heard anything else in that regard. But it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting that uh, Janetti posted what he did yesterday in Facebook, removed it, and, you know, in light of an investigation happening, uh, saw fit to go on Boston Wrestling MWF and talk about it. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know either. I mean, if, if, look, if, if, I mean, if he's just playing around or just a desperate cry for attention, I mean, you're, you're using uh, police resources here, potentially. <laughs> maybe don't, maybe don't do that. Um, I yeah I don't I don't, I, I don't know I don't, I don't know. know I don't know I don't know <laughs> I don't know what to think I either know. I don't know what to think we're know. just putting the info out. what do you guys think <laughs> did he do this who is this poor guy that well not poor guy apparently he was like trying to you know he was just trying to do something really bad to old Marty to young Marty Janetti mm -hmm. anyways yeah uh, developing story uh so uh, in a more lighthearted take on the idea of people. Of a guy killing people, uh, uh, we we we're, we've been presented with a question today: uh, Was Karrion Cross actually Killer Cross for real? So former WWE announcer Hugo Savinovich made an interesting claim about NXT superstar Karrion Cross that he was an actual hitman during a video posted on his Facebook. 
Hugo said the following, and this transcript comes to you from Wrestling Inc. He's a warrior. He's an athlete that was once a hired murderer. This is not a making no, this is not a making this, making that. No, this is the real thing. Now he's so passionate about wrestling. I love my friend. We have a great friendship. God bless him and his love with Scarlet. Hugo then said that he's got an interview with Cross soon. Well, they're well where they'll discuss how Cross went from quote a real life mercenary to become the face of NXT. I mean, um, Hugo has said some pretty crazy things. Uh, yes, fairly recently. Yeah. Um, now you know if he has a, a an interview with Kerry Cross and this topic is discussed, um, I'm interested to see what comes of it. Me too. Um, yeah. But. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't have to make of this either. Honestly, don't know. I'm just going to venture to say I don't think he's he was actually a hitman. Yeah, I'd be very surprised if that were the case. I'd be pretty shocked. He's a very flamboyant villain. As I mean, my know. understanding is that WWE is like pretty, at this point now especially, does a, a pretty thorough background check of people that they're going to sign and if they had any inclination that anything like this was remotely true, I, I don't really know. I I need to maybe I should go back and look at some of his interviews and in he did like an extensive interview with Chris Van Vliet from what I understand. Maybe yeah. he talked about his past there. Um, what he he was doing he was doing security guard work. I think he was in the security business. Oh, um, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. All right, um, he was doing that uh, uh, when he was making his uh, Impact debut or something. I'm pretty sure that's what he did. All right, I think I read that somewhere. I didn't read anywhere that he was a mafia hitman, but. I don't know, man. Maybe maybe Hugo's just trying to build up his backstory a little bit, and you know, oh, we'll find out. Anyways, yeah, I don't know. Uh, somebody who actually did try to commit murder on AEW, <laughs> Sammy Guevara, tossing that chair square at Matt Hardy's face with seemingly uh, reckless abandon. Seemed that uh, way. Might might have some backstage heat because of that, Larson. Yeah, according to Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer Radio, Guevara was given a stern talking to. After the segment, this is from uh, 401 Mania, uh, after the segment by people backstage, of course, the segment was uh, a brawl with Matt Hardy, which saw uh, Sammy uh, throw a chair directly at Matt Hardy while he was prone on the table. So after the segment, uh, who said they said to be unhappy with the spot, Guevara reportedly was not supposed to throw the chair at Hardy's head full force as he did. Hardy got about 10 stitches when it was over, and he posted some pretty graphic images, mm. Hardy did. Of that, the pretty massive gash on his forehead mm -hmm. following that yeah. statement. He was just bleeding all over the place. It was a ton so, of blood. There was a lot of blood. So uh, I guess Sammy uh, got to be a little more careful with uh, those chairs and throwing them around like that. Yeah, man. You got to be careful with that. I'm sure it was an honest mistake. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he was apologetic and was like, yeah, I didn't really mean to do that, but I did mm -hmm. it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully he went to uh to, to Matt as he was being stitched up, or shortly thereafter, he's like, "Hey man, my bad. I apologize. I'll do better next time." He should have been doing all his vlogging. He's like, "Hey, I'm gonna go apologize to Matt Hardy. Hey man, sorry about that." <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would have really engendered much goodwill. I don't think that would have seemed sincere in the least. No, you know who is sincere though? CM Punk. CM he's Punk, coming back. He's, sincere, yeah. he's coming back, uh, man. Mm. Maybe not, but you know what might. Entice him to come back to WWE. Raw Underground, baby. The latest sensation in all of pro wrestling. It is great. Uh, so he was on a, uh, what was it, SummerSlam 92? Yeah, watch along. Uh, yeah, on Fox Sports 1, I think. With his good friends Booker T and uh, Renee Young. Yeah. Oh, was Finn Balor on this too? Oh, was he? Well, I just see, I just see the thumbnail for this thing and I see Finn Balor in it. Oh, yeah, there he is. Bret Hart's on there, too, so maybe Bret was on this watch party. Well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, Bret Hart fought at, summer, at the SummerSlam. Did you see that on Twitter? Somebody posted, like, a, a montage of Bret Hart promos talking about SummerSlam, and in every single one he calls it the SummerSlam. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. You always put the definite article it's in like front a of it. It's like a ton of them, too. Uh, he was in a lot of Summer. He was in a lot of the SummerSlams. He was in a lot of the SummerSlams. Uh, summer anyway, so Renee Young asked... Uh, uh, about his thoughts on Raw Underground. Number one, I am actually kind of shocked that CM Punk still watches. Like, I would have figured with backstage, yeah, with backstage wasn't, being over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, canceled, there's really yeah. no reason for him to to pay attention to wrestling anymore if he didn't want to. That's gonna. I mean, that's kind of a story into itself. CM Punk still watches Raw. Uh, he says this. I absolutely loved it. 
I want to see Nia Jax in there. They should get more women in there. Let us see some bodies getting broken. Uh, he, uh, he wondered during the conversation. Again, this is from Wrestling Inc., these uh, transcripts. Uh, if Raw Underground would be restricted to just Monday Night Raw or also be featured on SmackDown, he says, the idea that Shane McMahon and all these people would be in the Performance Center for the whole three hours and they cut into what they're doing in various segments is pretty cool. Three hours of no-holds-barred fights and strippers. That's all I want to see. Uh, and then uh, Booker T admitted that Punk was the first wrestler he thought of after watching Raw Underground. He says, I saw, as soon as I saw the preview, a shoot-fighting concept and all, bringing the noise... The first person I thought of was CM Punk. I know the money has to be right, but maybe this thing will lure Punk back to the WWE. Uh, and Punk's it, response here is pretty good. Yeah, he says, you want me to get that first MMA win, right? That's pretty funny. I like that Wrestling Inc., though, makes sure to say uh, that at the conclusion of the quote there, I know the money has to be right, but maybe this thing will lure Punk back to WWE, joked Booker T. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it says here, uh, whoops. Yeah. Oh, he's also joked about, uh, he wanted to see Renee Young, uh, take on Bailey mm-hmm. on Raw Underground. So he liked he also, it. He also said, apparently, he also said that he thinks that Big, Big E, he agreed with Booker T, that he agreed that Big E should kick the new day to the curb, man. I don't want to see that either. I just want to see him be his own man. His own person. Anyways. All right. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways. Fine. Let's Anyways. talk ratings because that's a good way to, to end the show. Oh, uh, thank God. AEW wins again. They're the best. Uh, another huge win for AEW. Uh, they got over 900,000 again. 901,000 to point three six in the coveted all-important 18 to 49 demo. Um, and then NXT 753. Point two, eighteen to forty nine demo. Both shows up. It's great to see AEW back over nine hundred thousand. Next stop, back over a million. Well, they're That's gonna have to. See. They're gonna have to do it on Saturdays after next week. Well, they got the one on Saturday, and then it's two weeks on Thursday, I think. Oh, okay. I think that's what uh, it was. I love this though. So there's, there's, of course, of course, Twitter has to amplify every goddamn thing. And, uh, and Dave Meltzer at the forefront of talking about the importance oh, of the all-important demo. This oh. cracked me up, though, because, like, in response to somebody talking about, uh, you know, I'm puzzled by people who don't understand that demographics influence television decisions. Uh, Dave Meltzer points this out. Green Acres was the funniest show on TV, and Beverly Hillbillies was one of the most popular of all time. Both canceled over demos. Well, I know he's a TV historian. Uh, I'd like to fact check that. Was Green Acres, in fact, one of the funniest television shows of well, all that's time? A, that's a subjective statement he's making. There. Green Acres is the And he place said Beverly Hillbilly is one of the most popular. I guess there's numbers that could uh, justify that. Oh, if, yeah, dude. Bel- that was, was hugely was popular. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, well, maybe maybe it was canceled to the demos. Like, I guess just like what dullards and poor people watched well, I mean, a freaking a situation uh, where the demo Beverly who watched the show weren't the ones with a disposable income. Well, yeah, I mean, the Beverly Hillbillies is a bit big, you know, it's just like an escapist fantasy. So a bunch of, like, poor people would watch that and because they all want to be the Beverly Hillbillies. I don't know. But, uh, yeah. you know, if, 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 and I don't know what demographic was most important back when that show was, was airing. I don't know. But right now, it's 18 no to 49. Idea. That's all that matters for advertisers. If you appeal well, to that, ba- they'll, okay. they'll pay you more for commercials. Back then, it was probably closer to, like, 18 to 35 because, like, 49. At 49, half the people in the world are dead anyways. The, 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 One of the Beverly Hillbillies on the fifties, sixties, uh, probably the early sixties. I All think right. was life expectancy that much different then than it is now. It was a joke, but I I can't believe it was past seventy. In let's say nineteen sixty two, Beverly right. Hillbillies had to be on in sixty two. I would think so. I show it was on. Forever. Oh my god, it was not that much different because isn't today it's like seventy something. Back then yeah, it's it was like seventy five or something. Now, all right, so yeah, it was a couple years. It was a uh, nineteen sixty one. It cracked over seventy for oh for men. It says life expectancy sixteen in, in nineteen sixty two was seventy, just over seventy. But for women, it was seventy three and a half. Interesting. So Beverly Hillbilly started in six. Wow, it was on from sixty two to seventy one. Well, that ain't going to be because of the demo. That's because it ran for it. How many more stories about poor people being rich? At that point, they're just rich. There's no more stories to tell. 
Um, so this is what Wikipedia has to say. Despite respectable ratings, the show was canceled in the spring of 71 after 274 episodes of CBS Network prompted by pressure from advertisers seeking a more sophisticated <laughs> audience. There you go! It was the demo! Decided uh, to refocus uh, its schedule on several uh, hip shows. How was it that after how many years? Seven? Nine years. Eight, nine year. How was it after nine, nine years they were like, hey, demo's not good enough? It's nine years. So I guess yeah, they canceled Green Acres and and uh, and uh, Beverly Hillbillies. Wow, to appeal to a different demo. So look at that fact checking the wrestler. Who are we to? Who am I to doubt the wrestling observer himself? My goodness gracious, not shocking though. Both those shows. Have you ever seen Green Acres before? Mm-hmm. Show for Dullards. Beverly wow. Hillbillies. Show for Dullards. Wow. Anyways, thanks everybody for watching. You're going in raw. Dullards, <laughs> or at least run by some. Thanks for watching, everybody. We appreciate it. Till next time, we'll talk to you later. Goodbye.